G'day, it's Marshall from MM4x4. Today we're going to go through the installation of one of our lockup kits in the Isuzu. Now the installation is the same for the D-Max, the MUX, and also the Isuzu version of the BT50. All right, here's a really quick overview of what we're going to do. You have the lockup kit controller. Um, you've got the cable, plug and play cable that goes to the transmission computer. You take away the glove box and the trim here to get access to it. Just plugs in. You've got a load resistor which you should find somewhere to just place. Got a cable to the OBD2 connector and a cable to the LED switch. Coming around to the driver's side, you've got the LED switch, which you pull the rubber back, just mount onto the trim here. And then you've got the OBD2 connector, which just plugs in here. Well, there you can see how easy that was to install. Um, and it can be easily removed as well and be done without leaving a trace. All right, first we'll go through what's in the box. So we have a set of uh, operating installation instructions. We've got the lock-up kit computer, there's a control unit, that's the brains of it. Uh, there's a little switch that clips onto the A-pillar, uh, that's also an LED. That tells you the status of lock-up and it also is used to turn the kit on and off and provide various other features. We've got the OBD2 cables, which are used to connect the, uh, the controller to the CAN bus of the car and give it power and also to a OW2 reader or gauge, like a ultra gauge, scan gauge, that kind of thing. And then there's also the plug and play harness that connects to the transmission control unit. The first step is we need to get access to the transmission computer where the wiring harness is, and that's located in behind here. So to do that, we take the glove box out and then we take the bit of trim behind it out. Now to take the glove box out, now all these um, clips have been pre-released so I can do this with one hand. You basically release the glove box and then you just lift it towards you and just pull it upwards and at the bottom are clips. So you lift it like that to get the clips to release and then you bring it right up to the top and then angle it so it comes out. So it's as simple as that. And you can see these are the areas where the glove box clips to. The next step is to remove this bit of trim. Now what you do is you get in behind about here or, or here and what you want to do is release the clips. Now, I recommend you use a trim removal tool, um, which is plastic. Um, if you use a metal screwdriver, you can tend to damage the plastic. Um, but basically what you want to do is you're releasing the clips and this whole piece comes out like that. Now, you can see there, the green items are the clips. The next thing to consider is the fact this is dangling down with a cable attached to it. My preference is to disconnect that, that cable. You just squeeze it in the middle. I can't really do this with one hand. Squeeze it in the middle and it will just pull out. Another consideration is where to mount the control unit. And basically up here under the transmission tunnel in this area, there's heaps of space that you can um, wedge the unit in that area. That also makes it really easy to access in the future if you need to. All right, this is the harness that goes to the transmission computer of the car. Um, that's the plug and play cable that goes into the transmission computer here and then there's also a load resistor on a heat sink here um, no holes to drill you can just find somewhere to mount that and this is the end that goes into the uh, control unit of the lockup kit now i mentioned finding a place to put it first because basically what you want to do is wherever you're actually going to put the control unit you will then route the cable up around to here so i'll do that now Hard to do with one hand, just like that. And then it's a matter of taking out, taking out this connector here. And he says, "Look at tab there." You squeeze that in. You hear it click. You squeeze it in and pull. And then we take the lockup kit harness, and we put that into where the transmission computer plug came out. It clicks, and then this end goes on here. Push until you hear it click. That's it. Then you tidy this up, cable tie this, and then that's the harness installed. Simple as. Next is the LED switch, uh, which is used to tell you the lockup status, uh, when it's locked and not, and also turn the kit on and off. And that mounts are here on the A-pillar. So to mount it, you simply just pull back the rubber trim. So I pull that back a bit, and it will install just onto this bit of trim here by clipping in. And 
and that's it it just clips in and then you put the cable in there and then basically put the rubber trim back and it is a it is adjustable so you can it's got minor range of adjustment to adjust your driving position so then with the cable going down the a pillar just bring it in under there and then we'll route this across through the trim through the tunnel over to where the control unit is now i'll just show if you see that this car it just has mentions on side here it has an airbag a side airbag so you can see here that's an airbag strap that's running up there so i recommend it's mounted below that strap when routing the cable up through here make sure it's uh, cable tied uh, so the cable can't fall down and interfere with your feet while you're driving Installing the ODB2 cables, the kit comes with a Y-splitter cable, so that goes on to the vehicle's OBD2 connector and then has two parallel outputs. One goes to the lockup kit and then the other one is free to use for uh, an ODB2 reader like an ultra gauge, scan gauge, that kind of thing. And it plugs onto the ODB2 connector, which is here, just like that. And that gives the lockup kit both power and uh, data communications to the vehicle ECUs. So now final step is just plug all the cables in. You've got the LED switch cable here. It plugs into that spot there. And then the OBD2 CAN bus cable, that one there, the four pin, it can go into either of these two positions. It doesn't matter which one. And there's no way to plug them in the wrong way because they're all different type of connectors. That's it for all the wiring installation of the kit. Now it's just a matter of uh, placing the control unit and the, the resistor if you're using the heat sink in a suitable location convenient spot is up in here so the spot I've chosen is tucked up nicely in here it's nicely wedged in it's not going anywhere and I've uh, cable tied the excess cable from the heat sink and the load resistor and it sits away nicely up there and the final step is just to put the trim and then the glove box back in and then we'll do a test all right first test is to start the car and check there aren't any warning lights No warning lights, no engine light and no transmission error light. Alright, now the installation's complete. Uh, we'll run the self-diagnostics. Now I'm in a BT50 here, it's the, the Mazda logo. Uh, to do that, turn the ignition on and move the shift lever to the manual position. And then you hold the button and count to five. And you can see the light will come on and you'll soon hear a click. There, the click that's a relay in the control unit what it's doing is it's running a series of six tests and when the light goes off um, it's finished now you see it's not flashing now if there was a fault you, what you would see is this would flash a number of times and then pause and then flash a number of times and pause and the number of times it flashes is the test that failed and you can go to the installation booklet and uh, look at some um, reasons for why that might be while waiting for the transmission to warm up, the LED will pulse at you. Alright, I've just used D and I've just driven to a, a road where I can get up to 50 k's an hour. And now we'll do a road test. So first make sure the kit's turned on. Short flash, long flash is on. And we're going to drive up to 50 k an hour in D. Now move across to manual mode and you'll see the light isn't on. Bring it back to third and you hear the click of the relay and now it's locked up. Go back to fourth and it unlocks. Back to third, locks up. So it basically the kit's automatically assessing the status of the car and decides if it can lock up or not. Now if it goes into second gear it'll unlock. It'll slow down a bit under third gear it's too slow for lock up as I accelerate it's locked up and you hear the click of the relay now if you see any error lights coming on at that point that's an indication there's a problem and should go back and check the wiring and the plugs etc there it is the kits now installed and working now I'm going to simulate a problem let's say for example you forgot to plug in the the harness that goes down to the ECU 
that's going to cause an engine error light. So that's out. Now, normally, if you have to do that, that's what this little link plugs for. You plug this on the end of the cable. So if you have to take the control unit out for whatever reason. But now I'm going to leave it in a state where I know it's going to cause a problem. Okay, I'll go through the same procedure, turn the ignition on. And straight away down there, you'll see the flashing transmission light. So that means there's a transmission error. It's picked up that there is no signal to the solenoid. And now if we run the self-test. Two, three, four, five. Starts the test, finds there's a problem. Now it's flashing it once. So it's basically failed the first test. And there's an error. So that'll keep going, flashing until shift it out. And there it stopped and it's exited the self-diagnostics mode. Now to clear that error, the first thing we'll do is we'll just plug that cable back in and I'll come back once I've done that. Okay, that's been done. Now I'll just turn the ignition off, put it back into the park. So now the ignition's off, turn it back on again. See the light's still flashing. So what you can do is any time you double tap the LED, it'll send a clear codes command. So I'll go tap, tap. So one flash comes back and it's no longer flashing. Okay, and then to complete the reset, you do need to turn the ignition off and back on. And it's cleared that code. Now that double flash feature, it basically sends a clear engine codes command to um, all the computers. So if you happen to have an engine light, you know, when the car's running, that one there, um, when you turn the ignition on, the engine on, you see it always goes off. But if you have one that's flashing, you can actually just double tap the LED at any time and it will send that command. Double tap, one flash, and it clears code. So it's a handy feature if you've got other issues with the car, like, I don't know, turbo overboost issues or something like that. It's handy because if you know what the problem is and it keeps occurring, you can just really quickly clear it and you can even do that while you're driving. Now, if ever you need to take the control unit out for some reason, like maybe a firmware upgrade, what you do is you can just take, when you take this plug off the end, you see there's this little link plug that's twist tied to it. You basically just stick that on the end of the plug and that returns the wiring back to factory. That saves you having to go into um, the harness and pulling this out and putting the original back in. So that's an easy way to get the car back to normal. Also, the kit's designed so if ever you unplug the OBD2 cable, which often happens when the car goes back to servicing, if it's left out, the car goes completely back to normal. So all the wiring goes back to standard factory. If you ever want to reset the unit back to factory defaults, put it into the manual position. The engine's not running, and you push and hold the LED for 10 seconds. It's 10, release, and it will flash five times to let you know it's accepted the command to reset.